So there's a lot of scams out there, clearly. Um, and the SEC is just starting to sort of get into gear with enforcing some of the most egregious ones. Um, but these uh, projects are permissionless, right? They're global. They are around the world. Anyone can be involved. Um, so the United States stands a lot to lose, at least in my opinion, if they take the wrong regulatory stance, right? Because these people can, you can move to Switzerland, right? There's the crypto valley is in Switzerland. You can go to Puerto Rico now, Malta, Gibraltar, Singapore, um, all places which may have a lighter regulatory touch. Um, you know, do you guys have an opinion there? Or do you think the SEC is doing right right now? Do you think there should be safe harbor? Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's it, it's tough. Uh, it, it's a tough job for the SEC because their job is to protect investors, and the reality is that um, most people are 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 losing money on these things because there's a lot of unsavory actors who, as as we've uh, talked about, there's a lot of scams, a lot of people who promise a lot of flashy things and then get people to invest and then run with the ICO money and so on. And the other interesting thing is that. This is probably, at least to my knowledge, the first time that the SEC is now in charge of innovation, or, or at least has the has the ability to to either halt technological innovation or allow it to move forward. And so we do have to appreciate that they're in a tough spot because it's they, they are right, um, but we are also right in that if we overregulate, there, there's no way to shut this thing down, and this this new model is inevitable. And we're already seeing the effects of the SEC's. Uh, potential hand in the space affecting the market in the United States. There's more and more companies who are not accepting investors from the United States or customers from the United States out of fear that the SEC will go out of them, legitimate projects. And that can spiral out of control if there isn't sensible regulation to be built around. There's a lot of ideas like a safe harbor and so on. The, the, the challenge is that it, it, it'll take a long time to really uh, uh, create a, a, a policy framework that works. But it is good that there is a, uh, an element of jurisdictional competition where, uh, at the very least, it, it, we do know that it's not going to die uh, by the hands of the SEC. Yeah. And I think what the misnomer is, too, about like regulation in Europe and other places is um, they're looking to attract talent, not just to be an easy place, but many countries that are being very friendly to ICOs have huge tax burdens on those ICOs because they want the tax revenue. So sometimes it's not just the SEC that you have to think about, like the IRS, like they're a player in this, um, FINRA, how you trade. Um, I think there's a lot of regulation that happens, and um, the U.S. Uh, you know, has a lot of stated regulation. I think they're trying to work with people. They're constantly talking to investors and innovators in the space. They don't want to halt things. But as Joel kind of pointed to, like the SEC has no motivation to be progressive of innovation. They are like protecting the downside. Like that is their job. So there, I think it may be a while until they come out and say like, hey, we want to help people do ICOs. Instead, I think they'd rather say, we're going to come after you if you do an ICO. Just have your books in order do the right thing, do the best that you can. So we advise projects just be as conservative as possible in the legal accounting and documentation. That way, if regulation changes, they come knocking on your door, you're prepared up to the extent of what we know at the time that you did it. Um, otherwise, there's no way to move forward unless you kind of take that like conservative but pro progressive approach. And this is a case that really well sort of illustrates your earlier point around um, crypto integrating into existing systems. We, I think, as investors, always urge projects to self-regulate. Um, and, and I think when you do that and you're act proactively working with regulators, I think the stance becomes a lot less harsh versus where there's a lot of speculative greed and, and sort of obvious regulatory arbitrage. Um, it, it's, it's, I think, you know, risky to, to go that route. 